Hey, what's up everybody? Rob Marzullo here, Ramp Studio Comics. And today I'm going to show you a little bit of my workflow and, you know, how I'm working on my Blackstone Eternal comic and the steps that I take in some of this. So I've got Manga Studio 5 going and uh, I'm using a Wacom uh, Cintiq for my tools today. So that being said, I'll get right into it and show you what I'm trying to show you. Um, what I wanted to, to make note of is that each panel that I've got here, uh, whether it be, you know, this one, which is still being roughed out and, and somewhat into the finish lines, to this one, which is already inked, and the one down here, which is still thumbnails on the blue line. Uh, what I do is I give them each separate groups over here, and I can adjust each one of them uh, really quickly. Like, I can grab the group here of panel one, hit control T on the keyboard, and I can size that sucker up, move it around, no worries. So if I'm too close to my uh, my margins or something like that, which you got to be real careful about when you're, you know, doing this type of illustration work, you don't want to draw things that get cut off in the final print. Uh, that's why you see I've got these margins all set up uh, to tell me where I'm at with that. And then panel two here, I've got this more to finish uh, inks. So if you, you know, if I progress this back, uh, you know, I've got some line work that I added. Kind of, uh, I've got what I consider my more neat line work, you know, my larger shadows in the border, and then I kind of throw in these messy lines at the end that I might might clean those up a little bit more, but I, I tend to do that just to give it a little bit more grit. Um, so there's that. Um, and again, I can, I can grab and adjust any of that uh, as a whole because I have them in these groups. So panel one, panel two, panel three, you know, and panel one, I've even got my perspective guides laid out that I use to draw the ship and stuff like that. So it makes for just a really good workflow to work this way. Um, now, as I come down into, uh, I'll show you, I'll, I'll demonstrate here on this, uh, what is that? One, two, three, fourth panel. So I'll add another group right here, call it panel four. Move that down in succession. Okay, now inside that I'll add another raster layer. Uh, the first one, actually, I, what I normally do is go layer, uh, create spec, uh, perspective ruler. I'll do a one point perspective on this. I grab this little uh, ruler tool or box tool that allows you to, it's this one here, it allows you to select it and move it around. I'll pan back a bit. And what I'm gonna do, this isn't totally necessary, but I find it helpful uh, on things like this. Oh, wait, oh this one. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and define the uh, the perspective. Uh, now, to me, it looks like it's an you know obviously an upshot, and I want the perspective lines uh, going with the uh, the main character, which is Krem here, uh, kind of like pointing to say you know take the ship to such and such, whatever. You know, so what I'll do is I'll move these perspective lines where I feel they need to be. Uh, I'll draw in some some dummy guides. All right, now this is the other thing. Uh, see how it did not grab to that for whatever reason, and I'm not entirely sure. When the the perspective lines are purple, and when this is selected, it should be grabbing to that. For whatever reason, the pencil tool doesn't. Let me go to a different pencil. Yeah, see now this one does. So that particular pencil, whatever it is, um, doesn't grab to it. So maybe something's changed in that setting. Um, so be leery of that, you know, make sure that the guides are set to purple and that uh, that middle one up here is selected there and it should be grabbing. So now I can draw onto these perspective lines, give myself this, uh, this grid to work from. Oh, and you know what? Something I did wrong. Control Z back. Thank God for control Z. Okay, so now what I want to do is grab this ruler one more time. I actually want to rotate this, the, the horizon line, and point that in the direction of the perspective. And I'll show you why here in a second. Okay, so that should actually be, uh, because we're at an upshot, the horizon, and actually the horizon should probably be way up here, but... Um, See if that's it. 
talking about there. Let's try that. Okay, draw out the perspective lines again. So the only bad thing is now they're actually fighting over each other because I got them too. Or maybe they're not. Okay, so now what should happen is, yeah, there we go. These, you know, because the, the scene's tilted. So you want this to show in the, you know, the background or whatever. Say, like, this would be the ceiling. You know, these lines going this way. Something like that. They, they would get tighter as they went further back like this so that you see that, you know, depth in the scene or whatever. Um, so now if we take that ruler off... Uh, Okay, right click on there and, and take away show ruler. Um, and then I usually convert that to a blue line also. Um, and then draw over top. And as long as I can make it out, which I think I can right there. So let me zoom up. Yeah, I can make that out. I mean, it's getting a little jumbled, but I'll clean that up in the next layer. And then I won't need it as much. So there's our, our perspective. And I, I won't have this wall... If you see, I've got these lines real tight over here, and there's a character here. Well, obviously, that's not going to work, so um, I'm not going to use those lines, but I'll use these these sets over here. So basically, this perspective of here to here, you know, that's what I'm seeing. And I'll just use those for reference. Okay, so now um, I'll bring that perspective guide into layer uh, panel 4 here, into this group. Okay, and... Leave this one, it will be my drawing layer now. Switch to a darker lead. Something like that. Hit R for rotating the page, which I like to do. And then now what I can do is get in here and refine the lines a bit more. So that quick uh, you know perspective tool effect is is really nice. You know, not that I need to draw these characters in so much the perspective, but uh, it allows to, to shape that background really quickly and then that does help even when building these characters um, and who I've got that from because I don't want to you know sound like oh I just you know knew that and all of a sudden I or you know I've been doing that for years and years I really haven't I actually have done way too much of just drawing on like blank sheets of paper and then just you know finagling my artwork until it looks good um, which is fine, I guess, in some regards, but um, there's definitely areas of it where you'll you'll see flaws in the work. Um, and uh, one of my all-time favorite artists, uh, David Finch, just started a channel, and you can check out his channel. Um, just I'm sure just type uh, David Finch into YouTube, and uh, he talks about this, and he actually uses the same software a bit. Uh, really great artist to learn from, so check him out, subscribe, all that good stuff, because he's, uh, you'll, you'll learn tons from him, and I, I know I have over the years, so, and the, even the next part I'm going to talk to you about uh, is something I picked up uh, years ago from one of his videos, and it, it makes a lot of sense, so what I do is I just kind of rough this out, you know, get, uh, get some of the forms going, yeah, that lat's a little big, but, oh well. And I look at it like this. Every time I redraw over top of this, I just try to refine the the artwork a little bit more. You know, it's it's not. I'm not trying to go right to a finished piece of art right now. Uh, that's you know that's probably two stages past this. You know, maybe even three because I end up inking it myself. But um, you know, and I want to try to you know really slope and, and shorten the uh, features in the head here because this isn't a more of an extreme upshot so I'm looking at this one up here for reference too I've already got a bit of an upshot here so I want this one to look even more extreme so the eyes will become tighter to the top of the forehead or the top of the head nose mouth everything goes up the chin starts to point up more all that happens here you're gonna see more of the entire bottom of the uh, the arm not just uh, a glint of it or anything you're gonna you know you're looking up at them so you're gonna see the whole bottom of the arm and then you're gonna lose features from the top of the arm um, I don't even know if you'd see this this much of the knuckles here but 
you know, I'm sure we can make that work, so I'll just draw that in there. Uh, Krim has these little, they look like little bat wings that come off the side of them, but they're not. They're, they're actually just little bone uh, appendages that uh, he uses to tap into the the feelings of his opponents. This is like a like a bounty hunter slash torture maniac dude. So he's he basically he's like real sadistic, and you know he doesn't just capture the people. He he inflicts a certain amount of pain and torture upon them to uh, to punish them basically. So that's why he's hired because he's he's so good at that. And when people want real revenge, this is the guy they call. So that's the idea. I know it's pretty sick, but start running out of ideas, you know, and I'm sure that's probably treading on something else. There's so many ideas that have been done in comics. It's like, it gets really tough coming up with something new and different, you know. So I try to think outside of the box with this stuff, but, you know, I'm sure it's been done 20 times over in some other genre or, you know, character type or whatever. Somebody be like, oh, that's like so-and-so, and he has that same power. Okay, so there's that. You know, I basically stayed pretty true to that thumbnail. Uh, I'm not sure I'm liking where the, the little uh, appendage thing is right there. I might just have both those pointing up. I was trying to show a difference there. Uh, but at any rate, this is the part I want to get, you know, get to and show you. Uh, let me find the thumbnail here, right there. So I'm going to take the thumbnail off, I guess, and then I'll go to this layer a little bit more, and I'll just fill in a couple more quick details of where the shadows are going to start lining up. Let me switch more. This doesn't look like much of a pencil. Let me go to the rough pencil here. Turn brush density down just a little bit. Alright, there we go. So the other thing is I try to get this software to react as much as possible to traditional means. Um, that way when you're, you know, when you're drawn with this stuff and then you go back to the the other stuff, it, it feels more natural. Um, I lost my power uh, last week because of a storm and uh, I had to run off a generator and minimal electricity in the house and stuff like that. And I felt really out of my element. I went to draw it on Bristol board and I'm like, God, I got to do this more often because, you know, I lose power and I, I feel like I'm right back to the stone ages with this stuff, you know. So it's good to it's good to do both, and you know the benefit of drawing on paper still is is you end up with an original. Uh, that's the only sad thing about this way. I don't get an original when I'm said said and done on this work. I basically have something I can print out, but I don't have that original copy of the artwork. So, and I'm still a fan of this stuff. So you know I like those originals. Obviously, I'm a fan of it. I draw it all the time. Okay, so there's a little bit of, you know, hint to the shadowing and, you know, the direction I'm going to take with this or whatever, right? Um, so now the point I wanted to get at, uh, the other technique that I find very helpful with this stuff is, and again, more more like drawing uh, naturally, uh, when you're when you're doing this stuff to sit there and and um, do this erase method, and it's just you know it's like traditional. Uh, illustration work or drawing, you know, uh, where you take the eraser over here. I put it down to about, we'll say 20 or 30. Uh, let's size it up. And then I'll softly erase over these lines and I'll almost entirely erase them down. So it's basically just like you were sketching something on paper and instead of throwing away the paper, you erase down your lines and you keep drawing over top which is very important to get yourself to do because uh, it's really easy to, to get in a bad habit of just throwing away paper, right? And just, oh, that's not coming out right. Throw it away, throw it away, throw it away. And next thing you know, you chalk up an entire half of a day to, well, I couldn't draw as well that day. Uh, that's actually, you know, I don't want to sound insulting, but that's a weakness of the mind. That's not really true. Uh, you have to fight through it and draw through it and as soon as you start doing this stuff professionally um, you'll realize that because you don't have the option to just say oh it wasn't coming out real good I'm just gonna keep throwing stuff away I mean yes sometimes it's good to walk away take a breather come back with a fresh mind 
uh, you got to take your breaks and stuff like that. Um, I actually use working out to do mine. I stop, I work out for a little bit, and then I come back, and I usually feel better and have a new perspective. Um, but, you know, that's that's not really the same thing. I guess the, the thing is, working through it teaches you that, you know, you can figure it out. And, that you, you know, I've, I've turned absolutely horrid drawings into, you know, pretty decent pieces. So um, it's just, you know, it's just training yourself to think that way. So, you know, it's just like anything else. So if you were working really hard on something and it wasn't coming out right, you know, hopefully you just wouldn't quit and walk away. You know, that's, you're never going to get anywhere if you do that. So same thing applies with art. So I use that soft erase effect, and then now what I'm doing, it looks like I'm just tracing the artwork, but I'm actually, anywhere I see, you know, anything I can make a tiny bit better, or hopefully a lot better, uh, I just change that a bit. So I might zoom in a little bit more. Um, I'm, I'm focusing a little, little bit more on line weight, uh, so I'll incorporate that as I go. You know, and then I just start picturing, you know, a little bit more detail into, into the uh, artwork as I go. Uh, a little bit more into the shadows, fix any uh, anatomy problems I might see that I just hurried up and scribbled in. Um, I have to check reference, you know, do it, do it relatively quickly and, and keep moving forward, but sometimes you don't have to. Like, um, like this arm actually, to me, looks like the muscles are placed wrong. Uh, they probably are. Like, I don't think you'd see this much of the bicep from this angle, um, or it would twist more, but, you know, I'm probably just going to go with it like you know a lot of times what I do and this is just preference I um I try to just keep fixing it with each stage and then since I'm inking it I try to do any major or not major fixes but I try to do any final fixes in the inking stage um, and sometimes I just push it through and I make it work and I try to fix it on the next uh, the next time I draw the same type of pose or whatever just because um, I guess mainly because it's my comic and it's not like I'm drawing for Marvel or DC or, you know, I'm not having to please an editor or anything like that. I'm just having to please, you know, fans, which don't get me wrong, fans are highly important and you got to keep them happy. But um, I also have to, you know, illustrate uh, other stuff to make a living and come back to this as I can to fulfill a dream. So I guess if I was getting paid to do it, um, you know, like, by somebody then I would then I would probably work on fixing that a little bit more I don't know just the way I look at it at this point I guess so you know, just keep filling in some shadows and on, I think that I would block in some heavier shadows at this point because I, I kind of do I, I really got to get over the hump of not shadowing enough um, these shadows are really important to push the form out and make it look a ton more dynamic. So I think I'm going to do that. I think I'm going to add some heavier shadows in this. Not to mention, I didn't give this guy much in the way of like, you know, techie armor or anything like that. I tried, I wanted to make him look like he was a futuristic tribal type thing. So I give him like these bones and this, you know, like this right here. He's just got wear like this He Man sash or whatever the heck it is. But I, uh, I was doing that because I, I would, you know, I didn't want to just go all, everybody's just all running around techie out in space, you know, I wanted to make it where, you know, some of these creatures, uh, you know, are absolutely fine out in space, so they don't, they don't worry about things like, uh, you know, techie armor or, you know, you know, they're, they're about the only thing that's techie for them is their spaceship and maybe some of their weapons, but this guy doesn't even you know, use much in the way of weapons. He is, he is a weapon, so he's powerful enough where he doesn't, you know, use things like that, so all he has is a spaceship. I know, pretty nerdy. But that's what, that's what you gotta do when you're making comics. You gotta think all this Think all the backstory and all the things that interact and, you know, what if, what if, what if. Like, that's the greatest question. Nothing better than sitting around with a bunch of comic book guys and doing the what if thing. 
come up with some really neat ideas. So that erase method I just talked to you about, I would do that probably one more time. Uh, it just depends. If I feel like I get it to a pretty decent look, then I'll just go right to finish pencils and then inks because I know that I can still touch it up in those stages. Uh, but if I'm still unsure the the piece and the parts of it are bothering me, then I'll just keep doing the soft erase and redraw, soft erase and redraw. And I think the benefit of that is too, is that you're you're basically um, you're trying to see stuff into the lines. So it's the same way on paper. So when you're erasing and redrawing over top you're trying to reveal something, you know, you're trying to see something and go, oh, wait a second, that would look really cool. And then you draw it in. And that's, um, I guess that's the purpose of it. It's a, it's kind of that way with digital painting, too. It's like you keep painting over something and then painting back and forth until you see something dynamic and then you bring that out. So I guess it applies for, you know, the different, you know, art styles that you're trying to pull off, so... Now here, like I said, the real important thing is placement. So I want the eyes real high because it's in you know more of a dramatic upshot. I want very little of a brow on, on this angle. Uh, the nose has to be really high, almost touching this eye right there. Uh, and then the mouth, he's not really uh, screaming this out or whatever, I guess is what I'm picturing. So just like this. You can see the upper part of the, you know, the teeth and the inside of the mouth, the roof of the mouth. And the underneath of his ears, he's got like these dog ear kind of things. So you'll see that. Okay, so now, and again, this whole bottom of the, the arm here would be in shadow. So I'll block that all in. Now he's a buff dude, so you can see all the the musculature and the the veins down here in the shot, you know. Something like that. And the next layer is when I'll get in and do all the the line work, you know, start drawing some in as I get there, but that would be the, really the next stage where I really get in and throw all the cra cross hatching in, grass hatching, can't talk today. Alright, so let's pan back, see if that's looking better. And then in the very back what I'll do is I'll, you know, add all this techie kind of angled wall stuff, you know, no no square walls, nothing looks worse and and uh, this stuff is to draw squares, no squares. And then chances are I would actually do that on a separate layer because then I can piece in my other characters. Or I guess I could draw all of this as one and then I could draw the characters as a separate layer. And then another thing I would probably do to make this look cool is I could draw these segmented walls like I was doing here. I can use these perspective lines to you know, fill those in, whatever, use these lines. And then in between these, uh, which actually would be behind, but behind these uh, segmented uh, angled walls like that, just do a bunch of like uh, techy looking, you know, um, lines and pipe work or whatever. That always looks kind of neat. And maybe, oh, a square. No, nope, don't put a square in there. Sorry. Why does this look off? Hold on. Soft erase. Oh, you know what it is. I'm getting the lines confused with my uh, my uh, uh, margins. Sorry. But yeah, so at any rate, just in between all this, do some techy lines. That'll, that'll look cool. It's easy to fill in, and uh, it helps still push that perspective out. Um, and then, yeah, there was a character over here, character over here. So I'll fill those in separately. So, all right, I don't want to make this too long. It's already getting, uh, we're at like the 25 minute marker. So hopefully that explains some things to you um, and let you know, you know, a little bit of insight into how to form panels like this, uh, how to draw in some quick perspective lines and then fit your characters and your scene in there. And uh, again, you know, try that soft erase effect because it's really like drawn on traditional 
uh, methods or drawn with traditional methods. So thanks very much for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe as always so I can keep bringing you these videos. And uh, check out Blackstone on Indie Planet if you get a chance. This is book two, and I'll uh, hopefully have this done and uh, available on there in a, a month or two, depending on how much time I can dedicate in between all my other things that I have to do in my life. So thanks very much for watching. Keep drawing. Keep having fun. Bye.